Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back this Sunday morning to Inside West Virginia Politics. We're honored to have U.S. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, Republican of West Virginia, with us this morning. There's so much to talk to. You know, I learned when I was a congressional aide, don't ever refer to the district work period as recess because it <laughs> makes it sound like you guys are out having fun and actually you bounced a soccer ball off your head this week. So I did. We'll, have did. To, we'll have to show that. That was out at Shawnee. You were here on <laughs> tourism at the Shawnee Sports Complex. But there's so much to talk about. You're doing so much during the, the district period before going back to Washington. First of all, let's talk about this VA investigation. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is getting really troubling and disturbing to a lot of people. Many of us know who the person of interest is in this mm -hmm. case, although she hasn't been named publicly. But where, where are you with in terms of Congress looking into this investigation? Well, I've made numerous contacts with the VA, talked with the director, talked with the OIG, talked with the U.S. attorney who's, uh, who's charged with the investigation of this case and possible criminal indictment. I'm as frustrated as everybody else of how long this has taken, and I, and I really don't understand why. Uh, when you think about um, the families, you think about some of the information that's leaked out uh, in terms of numbers of families and uh, access to medicine and all the questions surrounding. But as I talk to the, uh, the folks that are investigating, they have said that uh, before we move forward with the Senate investigation, they need to complete their investigation and move towards any kind of criminal indictment if that's what they choose. But it's just incredibly sad, appalling, and um, shameful that number one, it's gone on so long or that it occurred in the first place. It's, it's very disturbing. Even after a criminal investigation is completed, could a Senate investigation be warranted just to make sure something like this never happens again? It seems like there were quite a few loopholes that allowed this to go on for as long as it did. I think we will have a Senate investigation. I think we need to know, uh, was the VA responsive enough, quick enough? What quality measures were uh, in place in that hospital? Or is that VA policy? Uh, who was, uh, I, I saw recently uh, that in, in a Washington Post article that a, a person of interest was uh, allowed to practice uh, with fraudulent credentials. Uh, that is troubling. And, and in and of itself, I think there's just a whole lot of unanswered questions that an indictment won't answer, but a Senate investigation would definitely be merited. Well, we're going to keep on top of the story as we have been for the last couple of months. Uh, turning to another subject, broadband. You know, that's been your biggest passion, right. or one of your biggest passions is the, the Capital Connect plan. $5 million this week from USDA right. to expand broadband in West Virginia. Is that enough, or is it just another piece of the pie and we're going to get more down the road? Well, this is USDA money. And if you think about USDA, you think, why would the Department of Agriculture be in Involved. Well, the Department of Agriculture was originally uh, um, charged with deploying electricity everywhere through their rural development. This, that's what this is. This is dollars that have been repurposed for broadband deployment, which is something through Capito Connect I've worked on aggressively. Two big grants, one in Mon and, Fer and, and Marion County and one in uh, Preston County. It's gonna, the, the estimates of service to individuals and homes is in the thousands. So it will make a difference. It's too slow, but it's actual dollars to actually get the fiber to the home, and that's what we have to do. Another really exciting thing to come out of this recess is your bill on New River Gorge and right. the possibility of making that a national park. Right. We know how beautiful it is down there. Right. Hopefully other people will learn as well. What other benefits would a bill like this have for West Virginia and particularly that part of West Virginia? Well, making the New River Gorge National River a national park and preserve, I think will be uh, a, a, a huge addition to tourism, economic development. You know, people travel from national park to national park as a family. Uh, that is a whole, they say 30% more visitation uh, with the designation of a national park. Think of what that will do to the residual businesses all around the area. So I put the bill in to, uh, uh, and am, am very much uh, excited that uh, Senator Manchin joined me and we are gonna uh, work hard to make sure that we get that national park in the, the Fayette Raleigh County area. It, it'll be beautiful and we'll share it with more people. We're down to about 30 seconds. The U.S. Tourism Commission was here this week yes. looking at Shawnee Sports Complex. Right. You got, as I said, got to bounce a soccer ball <laughs> off your head. But yeah. How important is the regional sports tourism market? What will it bring it's to the state? It's huge. I think it's millions of dollars. And we had that soccer tournament down there uh, that we shared. Also, it's a regional approach because we used fields in, in uh, Barbersville and in Cabell County. Uh, I think the restaurants said they had the best summer. Uh, the hotels said they had the best summer. Directly attributable to that sports complex.
very exciting, especially for this region. It is. Absolutely. All right. We want to thank U.S. Senator right. Shelley Moore Capito, Republican of West Virginia. Stop yeah. by anytime you're in we'll town. We'll do it. Thank you both. And we'll have more of Inside West Virginia politics after this break. Stay with us.